fresh chaos for the Tory party as two more MPs quit, forcing Rishi Sunak to organise a mini reshuffle. Uh, James Heapy has been replaced by Leo Doherty, yes, who I know as Armed Forces Minister, and in a change to the education role, Robert Halfon has stepped aside and been replaced by Luke Hall, yes, I know. Well, we're joined now by former number 10 Director of Communications, Jonathan Haslam. Jonathan, what message is this going to be giving to the remaining members yeah, of the Tory yeah. party and the wider electorate? Good morning, Nicola and Jeremy. Uh, the message is actually quite a lot of people have given up. Right. And uh, you look for signs in, in history and cycles. Go back to 2010. 150 MPs decided that they weren't going to stand at the next election. Is that right? Number of ministers. Yeah, a vast majority of those were Labour MPs, 13 years in power, they saw the end coming. The charismatic Gordon Brown really wasn't cutting it for the electorate. Um, and to be fair, there had been a global financial crisis. Now we've got about 98 who said they're not going to stand at the next election. 63 Tories, but actually you've got four who've had the whip removed. So you've got people like Bob Stewart, mm -hmm. and Crispin Blunt, Julian Knight, uh, and of course Matt Hancock, remember him? Mm -hmm. So that takes you up to about 67 Tories, some of which we can absolutely easily do without. These two, Heapy and um, uh, Robert Halfen, that's a great shame actually good for the country. Yeah. Good MP, good ministers too. Halfen was a thorn in the side of the government when he was in chair of the Select Committee on Education and has become an extremely effective education minister. He's really good on apprenticeships, apart from anything else, and he's seen as a very genuine guy. James Heapy, uh, army background, uh, fought in Afghanistan, distinguished, uh, has made no uh, bones about the fact he thinks we should be spending 2.5% of GDP mm. on defence, um, and is going back after a very short time in public life. And that's a great shame. The, bub the public actually is missing out because of that talent. It's really interesting what you said about um, giving up, right? We have to, you know, as a broadcaster, we have to say that people will decide and whatever. But what's really interesting is, is that in the last six months, in the, in the, the last throes of many administrations, as you say, people decide that they're going to give up. And then you see all these self-serving MPs jockeying for position. It's all about timing, isn't it? Do I, do I walk out on something that's going to fail? Do I hang around and try and pick up the, 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 the baton? Or do I align myself to the person who might pick up the baton? Or do I know? And so, all of a sudden, it, it, it could, you know, the agreement between everybody, and you'll see it, Shaps yesterday spoke out and basically put pressure on the PM and said, we need to spend more money on defence. He's been the yes. defence secretary for about three days. He's had about 14 jobs in a year, <laughs> and patently he wants to run for leader. And then for the next six months, everybody's saying their own bits for their own ends. And this is how I see it. So why don't they just call an election, Jonathan? Uh -huh. Well, because hope springs eternal, Jeremy. Hope springs and eternal, That's Bob what you're looking at. You've got Rwanda bill coming through uh, after Easter. Yep. Pro we'll probably see a person. And other, what happens other, in the three uh, weeks while they're eating chocolate on oh, recess? Rwanda yeah. just carries on, does it? Well, I'm afraid it does, yeah, yes. Yeah, We've, yeah. We spend okay. a lot of money. But the important thing is that we get somebody who's not a government minister out to Rwanda. Uh, and that happens. And, and that's one opportunity. Interest rates, most of the markets are putting 7.75% in three cuts down. We'll follow the American Fed in that aspect. But by the end of the year, interest rates will be down, mortgage rates might come down as well. That's all priced in. So if your Rishi Sunak is saying, look, what matters? Are you feeling better economically? And that's where we might get to if we push to November, which is, I think, probably where we're going to end up. Yeah. Do you really think people will feel better off economically by November? No. No. Because it takes <laughs> far too long, Brilliant. far too yeah. long for all of these things to feed through. So I think there's a very good economic case for getting rid of the or reducing national insurance charges. It takes time for people to feel it. Um, I think that people need to understand that the dynamic changes. I think, the dynamic, it, Jonathan, I, I think the dynamics changed in politics. I know everybody says he's off again, but I do think it's true. I'm not sure that the British public are as gullible as they perhaps were in the past. I think I that don't when... think the British public have ever been gullible, I Jeremy. Do. I, I, do. I honestly think that the British public are smarter. When, we yeah, just, I agree. When we push just, comes to shove, when you've yeah, got to put your cross in the box, right? Absolutely. At that yeah. time. At Otherwise, that we expect them to get on with and it. And I said it earlier. Why, the British public going, do you know what? We don't actually want your tax cuts because we know we're going to have to pay it back in a bit. That would never have happened. What I'm saying is, 
I think they're more switched on. And I think they might go, well, OK, so he'll tax this and drop this, and maybe by November it all sounds a lot better. But the pan in my pocket still ain't what it was before, and that will be the judgment. It will. Too late. That is the, the issue with inflation, because although inflation comes down, there has been a ratcheting it up of prices, and they're not coming down.